So Abigail was saying that in the hundred years we've studied gender dysphoria, that is uh, where you are highly uncomfortable with your biological sex, it has overwhelmingly been males wanting to be females. Is that correct? Yes. And for the fir- the last 10 years, the first time ever, the, the majority are now females wanting to be males, and it's almost all found among teenage girls, and it's a contagion, as you put it. I'm just reviewing what you said, A, because I, I do that often to make sure I got it right, and B, I want people to hear what we were saying. So that's all correct. Yes. So I asked you, because somebody said this to me as a female, that... that it's it's a it's sort of a unique hurdle, teen uh, teenagehood for girls. Do, do you agree with that? Absolutely. You know, it is, female puberty is very very hard. You start out with a body that's very you know almost indistinguishable from a boy's in terms of strength and speed, and 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 and, and you you really transform into a very different person. Um, the your your hormonal changes, the physical changes, um, they're they're really big, and it's a very confusing time for women. And there have never been so many available alternatives to womanhood. It was just something we went through. Obviously, you know, starting menses is very difficult. It's painful. It's it's also really uncomfortable for girls. And and now there there are so many influencers online and, and the, you know, social media influencers are more important to this young generation than Hollywood stars. And social media influencers, there are a lot of trans influencers online, and a lot of them promise that if you just start, start a course of testosterone, all your problems will go away. It's a great explanation. Frightening, but but very clear. Are there, what about the voices of those who regret uh, uh, transgendering? Are they allowed even on the internet? You know, Reddit took one of the large, the largest sub, um, subreddit, which is a group in which they were able to meet and communicate. This is a fast-growing population, by the way, young women who regret their tr- medical transitions. And Reddit shut it down. Now it reopened it, but I, I am, you know, sure it has the effect of chilling speech when you su- your group is suddenly shut down because trans activists complained. And this is, look, this is a young women, a population of young people most of them now women who are coming out and regretting, you know, regretted it, who are filled with shame. It, it takes tremendous bravery to talk about what you did to your body and how you regret it. It's extremely embarrassing. And it's very hard for these young women to come out um, and, and, and talk about it. And I was able to interview some of them in my book. And, and the stories are, are, are frightening. You know, double mastectomies they regret, hysterectomies they regret. Well, uh, who is the man? You may know him. He writes for USA Today uh, on occasion, and he has started a group of men, uh, well, I think transgender in general, who regret it, uh, as he does. He, 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 I think, I don't know, 10, 15 years as a woman, and he deeply regrets the, the lost time and relationships and so on. Are you familiar with him? I assume you're talking about Walt Heyer, but I'm not Yes, sure. I am. Yeah, That's okay. correct. So, yeah, I've talked to him many times. He's I, wonderful. I, I suspect so. So is he allowed a forum? What is his story? I, you know, I don't know. I don't know the specifics of, you know, what, mm-hmm. you know, he's been very brave and forthcoming. Um, right. Well, the uh, USA publishes him because they have no choice. They'd have to fire him as a contributor. But he's the only one who, who you ever read in mainstream media, uh, like, like, the, like USA Today. You're in the Wall Street Journal, but he's, he's in USA Today saying this stuff. Right. So the, the the girl is promised a solution to her problems. Is that is that what you're saying? Yeah, they're, they're prom- promised a solution, and, and there are so many lies told around this. I mean, doctors, therapists, teachers celebrate it as if transition is just easy and simple. And it's not. It's really invasive. It's really damaging to the body. It can be. And it comes with all these kind of side effects not you know, and risks. And perhaps the biggest is the unknown. We actually don't know what testosterone does to the body 
the female body when it's given it 10 to 40 times what a young woman would normally experience for decades, which is what's required. It's a permanent, you, the, the woman becomes a permanent medical patient. We know it causes severe vaginal and uterine atrophy and risk of endometrial cancer, but we're just learning about all the, the risks. What percentage do you think stay male and are happy about it? Or, or it's too early to it's, know. It's a little too early to know. We we can see a lot of look. A lot of these young women, they don't look like they have gender dysphoria because first of all, they didn't have it in childhood, and second and and second of all, look, we we know what you know what they used to call transsexuals. They didn't come out because they're friends. They certainly didn't do it to be to be celebrated. These were people who sincerely That's had right. this yes. profound discomfort. So we're dealing with a very different situation, and 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 one where that transition is. L- much less likely to be helpful to. Are you allowed to say, you say your, your 12-year-old daughter says, I'm a boy. Are you allowed now to even say, look, we love you, but you're really a girl. Can you say that even today? Can a therapist say that? So a therapist definitely can't say that or or at least has, you know, risks losing their license because we have so-called conversion therapy bans in I think 19 states now that say that you can't even convert, you know, it was supposedly they were they were passed under the idea that they were about, you know, homosexual conversion therapy, but they included gender identity language. And of course, you know, making someone comfortable in their body was how, always how gender therapists or, or, or therapists dealt with this. And today it's, it's banned. So yeah, it would be very hard for a psychologist to do that. Our book is up at DennisPrager.com. Abigail Schreier. 